Now on Turtle Canyon Comedy, Alan Bennett presents Talking Heads. Lord Vader's in one of his moods today. I was looking forward to the fortnightly meeting of the Imperial Death Star Fundraising Neighbourhood Watch and Keep the Galactic Empire Clean Committee. More so than usual. You see, Emperor Palpatine had dissolved the Galactic Council. The last remnants of the old Republic had been swept away and the regional governors had been put in direct control of their territories, which were about time, if you ask me. So to mark the occasion, I'd bought a nice Battenberg cake and a pot of Earl Grey. I mean, I needn't have bothered. I mean, who needs cake when you've got a bun fight going on? I don't mind admitting I was ready for a bit of peacocking, what with the Death Star having recently been declared fully operational. It were a pet project of mine, something I was proud to call me own. It took my mind back to my childhood on the planet Eriadu in the Outer Rim territories. I remember one long summer's afternoon as I watched my granduncle Jova Tarkin as he built a wall at the bottom of our garden. What struck me were what big hands he had and how I'd never be able to build a wall with my little lad hands. I remember saying to him, Granduncle Jova, when I grow up, will I be able to build a thing as big as that? And he laughed and said, Will Huff Tarkin, if you stay dedicated and work hard, one day you'll have in your command a moon-shaped space station with the capabilities to destroy an entire planet with just one shot of its giant laser beam. And he were right. Not that I would have any chance to bask in any sort of glory with this bickering going on. I mean, I don't think people appreciate how difficult it is to get a nice Battenberg cake and pot of Earl Grey in this corner of the galaxy. I'd had it sent by recorded post all the way from the planet Naboo at considerable expense. People often ask me how I can tell when Lord Vader's in one of his moods, and I say to them, the moment that he's choking an Imperial Admiral using only his Jedi mind power is the moment he's being a right Mardi so-and-so. I mean, he's had his family problems, which we don't like to talk about. I mean, he never sees his kiddies. But Admiral Motti should know better than to goad him about his religious beliefs, on this occasion referring to them as sorcerer's ways. I mean, I'll be the first to admit that Lord Vader does bang on a bit about the Force and the dark side. But, as I often point out, many of my best friends are Sith. And they've contributed a lot to our society with their customs and cuisine. And anything they take out in benefits, they more than make up for in tax revenues and applicable skills. I can't say I really understand it, though. It takes my mind back to my childhood on the planetary Ardu in the Outer Rim territories. I remember when we were at school, there were these kiddies that would get up and leave every time we sung hymns. Plymouth Brethren, I think they were. I wonder if Lord Vader ever used to get up and leave whenever they sung hymns. I wonder what Lord Vader's singing voice is like. I imagine he's got a husky baritone like a young Barry White. Vader, release him, I say, finally, and he does. But I detect a hint of sarcasm in his voice as he says, as you wish. He's always undermining me in public. After everybody's gone, I eat the rest of the Battenberg cake, alone. The Earl Grey's gone cold by now. Mm. 